Bismillah here Rahman near Rahim. The Eclipse of Islam. What happened to Islam after Umar? By Ghulam Ahmad Pawe. Dedicated to late Makbul M. Farhat, former coordinator, Basim Tolu e Islam, London. Part 3. Foundations of Islam. Before we go into the details of the Ajami conspiracies against Islam, we will refresh our memories about the foundations of the deen that Allah gave to human beings through the Prophet and which is preserved in the Quran. According to the Quran, study, observation, experience and teachings are means through which human beings acquire knowledge. This knowledge can be acquired by every human being through the process of deduction and induction. There is also another kind of knowledge that Allah gives directly to his chosen, pious people. This is called Wahi, divine revelation, and the people who get this knowledge are called prophets. The last time this knowledge was given to Prophet Muhammad, and with him this method of knowledge ceased. In other words, prophethood ended with Muhammad. Now, knowledge can be acquired by experience and observation only. The end of the prophethood means that now nobody can get knowledge directly from God. What was revealed to the Prophet is all preserved in the Quran which is a complete code of conduct for humanity for all times. It is complete and immutable. Its meanings are very clear. It is in Arabic and can be understood by applying attention. Thought, knowledge and wisdom, the Prophet gave this to us in its present form and not a single word of it has ever been changed, Allah has taken responsibility for its preservation. Deen, which is preserved in the Quran, is a system of life which is implemented in its own independent, sovereign state. The state is established by the Ummah which elects the best person as head of state who runs the affairs of the state with the consultations of Ummah. The objective of the state is to implement the laws of the Quran and establish a society in accordance with these principles and values. This state was first established by the Prophet. After his death, this state continued to exist for a time. After that, the train the Ummah derailed. This is called the Ajmi distortion in the Deen because, as we discussed earlier, its first source was in Iran. This term, Ajami, means all such beliefs, ideas and schools of thought which are against the Quran, no matter where they come from. We have seen that the first conflict in the Ummah emerged over the claim of the Khalifa of Ali. It was asserted that the Khalifa cannot be elected. He is appointed and named by God and is called, Imam. The first Imam is Ali and then this Imama went to his descendants by inheritance. Earlier, we discussed only one aspect of this belief that was about politics. Before we go further, let us look at the family tree of those who are recognized as Imam. The family tree of those who are recognized as Imam. Batni, Bori, Aga Khani are called Ismailis after him. These sects consider Imamat as hereditary. Kasaniya sect. Kasaniya was the first Shia sect that recognizes Ali's son Muhammad ben Hanfiya as Imam. He was not born of Fatima but another wife of Ali's, Hanfiya. In other words, this sect gave preference to Alwis over Fatimids. When Muhammad ben Hanfiya died, one group of his followers concocted the belief that the Imam was Mehdi, the promised one, who will return. 
He did not die but had disappeared from the vision of the people. He will return on earth soon and establish his government. Please note how this belief in return, which was implanted by Abu Abdullah ibn Saba, was applied. We will also see that this concept had been applied to a number of Shia personalities. Kaisanius believed that Imam is the personification of God and like God he is eternal. Khorasan was the capital of this sect from where it spread its network of conspiracies against the Umayyad Empire. Zaydia sect. Another Shia sect is called Zaydia. They recognize the majority of Imams from Ali down to Zainal Abidin but, after him, they recognize his younger son Zayed as Imam not his elder son Barka. They believe that Imama will remain in the descendants of Ali, but it will not be confined to any particular line or family. This is the most moderate Shia sect and very close to the Sunni Fiqhi, Imamiyah and Ismailia. Shia groups which recognized Imam Barka, and after him his son Jafar Sadek, later split into two groups. These are the two groups which became famous in history. One of the groups said that after Jafar, his older son Ismail was the God-appointed Imam, while the other group recognized his other son, Musa Kazim as Imam. The first group is called the Sixes, because it recognizes six Imams, or Ismailis. Batni Fidai and other similar Shia sects generally belong to this group. Today, Aga Khanis and Boris are two famous branches of this sect. The other sect is called the Twelvers or, simply, Imamiya. The dominant majority of Shias belong to this sect. They recognize twelve Imams. About the last Imam. Muhammad. Of this chain they believe that he is alive and hidden in a cave in Iraq. He will reappear near the Day of Judgment and establish his just rule all over the whole world. He is also called Imam Mehdi staunch sects of Shias. All Shia sects believe that the Imam is appointed by God and their hidden Imam will return. However, the beliefs of some staunch Shia sects are based on exaggerations. For example, one sect, Karam Dinia, considered the Imam as God, Prophet and Angel. It did not believe in the Day of Judgment and denied any accountability of one's deeds to God. This sect believed in the concept of the return of the Imam. This sect also believed in reincarnation which they called Raja, transfer of the human spirit, in this world, from one body to another body. Dot. Certain staunch sects believed that our prophet and other prophets will return to earth near the day of judgment and all will recognize the prophethood of Muhammad. Similarly, Ali will also return to earth and will assassinate Moria and his descendants. The founder of Qatabiyah sect, Abu Qatabiyah used to call Imam Jafar Sadek God and himself his prophet. Whenever some Imams denied and opposed such beliefs, these people said that they are saying this because of Takia, otherwise they support our beliefs. Earlier we explained the meaning of Takiyah which is a belief common to all Shia sects. Katabia also believed that in every age there are two prophets. Natik, one who speaks. And Samit, who remains silent. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a Natik prophet while Ali was a Samit prophet. Beliefs of some staunch sect were so deplorable that we abhor even at mentioning them. However, all of them called themselves Muslim. Their task was to hatch conspiracies against the incumbent government. Obviously, it was a Sunni government whether it was the Umayyads or the Abbasids. When they were unsuccessful in their conspiring, they will console their followers by saying, don't worry. In the final days, near the Day of Judgment, the hidden Imam will appear and establish a Shia government. These staunch sects emerged and disappeared at different historical moments and now we find their footprints only at certain places but they have no significance. Only two Shia sects were of historical importance which are still present today. They are Ismailia. 
Aga Khani Kojas and Burris. And Amamiya. Asna Ashri. Who are in the majority. Let us now discuss beliefs of these two sects. Ismaili beliefs. Ismailis always kept their beliefs and teachings strictly secret and it was very difficult to say anything about them with certainty. The real name of this sect is Batna or Hidden. Sometimes back one of this sect's researcher, Dr. Zahid Ali, former Arabic professor and vice principal of Nizam College Hyderabad Deccan, took the courage to publish a book based on his sect's authentic secret books and documents. The title of his book is Hamareri Ismaili Majab Ki Hakikar Ayar Iska Nizam. The reality of our Ismaili religion and its system. We are reproducing here excerpts from the 1954 edition of this book. About the foundation and teachings of this sect, he writes. The founder of this sect was Hamun Kadar of Iranian origin. He has already been mentioned within the context of the Fatimid, or his son Syed Abdullah. His objective was to create a religious movement which could confront Abbasi Khilafat. For this purpose, Imam Abdullah formed a group which included such persons who were by nature inclined towards the Mutazila ideologies and philosophical thoughts. Help of Allah Bayt was sought to make this successful because the Shias who were attached to the Allah Bayt could easily accept this religion. Peep 611. About their beliefs, Dr. Zahid Ali writes. Their basic foundation is on the principle that the Prophet formulated the visual Sharia. Islamic laws. While Maulana Ali explained its hidden meanings. After him six Imams completed the hidden teachings and the seventh Imam. Maulana Muhammad ben Ismail. Suspended or abrogated the visual Sharia of Muhammad. All the Imams from his descendants, who came so far and will continue to appear till the Day of Judgment, are all Qayyim Khalifas. If any of the Khalifas got opportunity to appear in the world he will explain the hidden knowledge and convert the whole world into Ismaili religion. The main characteristic of the Ismaili teaching is its secrecy. We cannot reveal our real beliefs. With the exception of privileged members of our faith, to others because of political and state interests since our general population was Sunni. This was during the reign of Fatimids of Egypt. Hence our teachings to our privileged members were different than to the common Ismailis. Junior members of our sect were also not told of those secrets which were unveiled to the mature members. Preface B. About their beliefs he writes that the Imam has the right to abrogate Sharia. He can cancel Sharia whenever he wants and reimpose it when he wishes. Distorted Quran. About the Quran, they believe. Jews and Christian abandoned their original Torah and Injil, Torah and Bible, and compiled their books on the basis of their opinions and speculations. Muslims did the same thing. The Prophet had collected Quran and handed over to his Wasi, heir, in the presence of his companions. Those people became careless and collected Quran according to their own ideas and beliefs. The third Khalifa destroyed the copy of the Quran compiled by the Ed another copy. Then Hajjaj set this book on fire and prepared another copy, taking out parts at his whim. Now this copy of Quran is in the hands of the Muslims. Preface Dr. Zahid Ali has presented many examples of differences between the Quran that the Muslims have now and the Quran that was compiled by Ali. For example, see the verse 67 of Surah Amida. Opening parenthesis. It may be pointed out that there is Ismaili belief about Hazrat Ali's compiled Quran is that it is with their Imams who will unveil it near the Day of Judgment. Takia is their fundamental belief. Also, they believe in Tawil which means that the Quran cannot be understood by its literal meanings but these letters have concealed meanings which only Imams know. Real meanings of the Quran can be understood or determined through Tawil. 
That is why the Prophet is called Rasul e Natik, the Prophet who speaks or rules on earthly matters. While Wasi, the Prophet's vicegerent is called Rasul e Samat, one who rules on the baton. Hidden. Hidden meanings. A vivid example of Tawil is the hidden meaning of La ilaha illallah, which is La Imam illa Imam Yuzed Zaman. P. 408. Wudu. Ablution. Means Ali because both words have three letters. Sala. Prayers. Means the Prophet because both have four letters. Therefore, the meaning of La Salat illa Wudu is that without the acceptance of Ali as the heir of the Prophet, the recognition of the Prophethood of Muhammad is meaningless. P. 424. As another example, the Quran says that Allah told Adam not to go near the forbidden tree. This means that the Imam Mustakar, Maulana Abu Talib, had prevented the Prophet from revealing the hidden meanings which is the prerogative of Maulana Ali. Zalim al-Awwal, the first transgressor, Iblis, the devil, obtained this knowledge from the Prophet by deceit. This was his, the Prophet's, first sin. The other was that he told one of his wives the secret that her father will usurp his heir's right. Keep 461. Still another example. In verse 2 over 1 2, Alif Lam Mim, Zalakul Katabo Lareba Feha, Zalakul Katabo is referred to Maulana Ali. P. 551. In short, the Ismailis determine meanings of all the Quranic verses by Tawil which keeps changing. Imamit. The focal point of the philosophy of Ismailis and other Shia sects is the belief in Imam which started as follows. Maulana Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of the Prophet, is from the lineage of Hazrat Ibrahim, and was, just like Ibrahim, an Imam Mustakar during the time of Hazrat Asa, Christ, which means that he had Nabuwat, Risalat, Wasayat and Imamat, all the four in his person. At the divine guidance, he had given separate ranks to two of his sons, Maulana Abdullah and Maulana Abu Talib. To the former, he gave the status of Nabu'ah and Risalat, thus making him the head of public. Open. Preaching. The latter was given the rank of Wasayat and Imamat and the headship of the hidden, or concealed, preaching. Maulana Abu Talib gave the status of Nabu'at and Risalat to Muhammad. Peace be upon him. And Wasayat and Imamid to Maulana Ali. This fact reflects the grandeur and honor of Maulana Abu Talib that like Maulana Abdul Muttalib, all four honors were concentrated in him. pp. 63-64. Hence, Maulana Ali was Mustakar Imam and the Prophet Muhammad was sent to confirm Maulana Ali. The Prophet's last message was about Maulana Ali's wilayat, rulership. Dot. It means that the real purpose of the Prophet's appointment was to eliminate disbelief in the wilayat of Maulana Ali. All people believe in God but they commit shirk, polytheism, when they do not believe in the wilayat of Maulana Ali. P. 360. About the Imam, they believe. Even if you see the Imam committing adultery, drinking wine or indulging in other immoral acts, you should not doubt his piety because Allah has saved the Imams from all such acts. P. 363. Our pious Imams are higher in ranks than the Prophets. They are like master and slave. Closing parenthesis. Imams cannot sin but Prophets can commit sins. Not only Moses but Muhammad is also included in these prophets. P. 366. Aga Khani and Bori. In the Indian subcontinent, Ismailis consist of Kojas, Aga Khanis, and Boris. Their beliefs are very bizarre. About their beliefs, we will quote from the book of Mirza Muhammad Saeed Delvi's book Mazahab Aud Batni Talim. Religion and Hidden Preaching. Colon. In ancient times when Hazrat Ali was Vishnu, Hindu God, Hazrat Muhammad took the form of Wadoyas. When Hazrat Ali appeared in this world, he was the tenth Ortar. 
incarnation of Vishnu Nishi Kalinki. Some Kojas also believe that Hazrat Ali was God and Muhammad was his prophet. Opening parenthesis. All Nazari Imams, including the present Aga Khan, are considered the incarnation of Hazrat Ali. In this way, he has the same rank of godliness that Hazrat Ali has. Kojas and Shamsi Hindus consider him the god. These people also believe in reincarnation, the day of judgment, paradise and hell. They consider the Quran as the last authentic book but do not recognize the Quran that the Muslim Ummah now has as unauthentic. Nazaria sect follows the dominant sect of the country in which they reside. For example, in Turkestan they follow Hanafi law while in Iran, Athna Ashri law. Nazari is the most famous sect of Ismailis. Hassan ben Saba was one of their imams. Batni Fidais, known in history as the Assassins, were his followers. Aga Khanis and Boris belong to this sect. Amamiya or Athna Ashri. These were briefly the beliefs of one of the important Shia sect, Ismailis. We will now focus on the other Shia sect, I. E. Amamiya. Athna Ashri. Sect. As we said earlier, Amama is the central belief of Shias. About their concept of Amama, we will present an excerpt from their most important book which is considered to be a vital pillar of this sect. This book is Al-Yusul Al-Kafi by Kalini. For them this is the most authentic book of Hadith. Traditions. Every Hadith of this book is narrated by one of their Imams. The book is written by Muhammad ben Yaqub ben Ishaq al Kalani al Razi. Died 329. A.H. This quotation is taken from the Arabic edition, printed by Hadri Press, Tehran, and published by the Islamic Book House, Tehran. It was translated in Urdu by the great author Maulana Syed Zafar Hassan Amravi and published in 1966 by Shamam Book Depot, Nazimabad, Karachi under the name Kitab Ash Shafi. The second part of Yusul al Kafi was published under the name of Pharaoh e Kafi by the same translator. Yusul al Kafi. As mentioned earlier, Revelation is acquiring knowledge directly from God and the revelation process discontinued with Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. All revelations of the Prophet are preserved in the Quran. God has taken responsibility for its protection. The end of prophethood means that the Quran is the ultimate authority in Deen. Now, nobody has the right in the name of God to force someone to accept any belief or idea which is outside or contrary to the Quran. Acquiring knowledge directly from God was the privilege of the prophets but in Yusul al-Kafi we see that Imama has also been included in that, though another term is used for that, I. E. Mahadas. The belief in Mahadas. In Yusul al-Kafi Sarara relates that he asked Imam Muhammad Bachir asterisk regarding the Quranic verse Kana Rasulan Nabian, the difference between Nabi and Rasul. He said that a Nabi sees an angel in his dream, hears an angel's voice while he is awake but does not see him while a Rasul hears an angel's voice and sees him in dream as well as while he is awake. I asked him what the status of an Imam is. He said that an Imam hears an angel's voice but cannot see him. Then he recited the following. Quranic. Verse. Wa mar asulna min kablika men rasulan wa la nabi wa la mahadas. Ash Shafi Volume. 1. P. 203. Imam al Bachir. D. 735 developed the concept of the esoteric method of reading of the Quran. Closing parenthesis. Before proceeding further we will see that the words wa'ala mahadas are not found in the said Quranic verse. 2250 seconds. In the Arabic version of Yusul al-Kafi this explanation is given about this tradition. Wa'ala mahadas inama kara ala bayt alahe salam. Volume 1 p. 167.
which means that the words Wala Mahadas are written in the Chirat e Quran of Ala Bait. The version, reading, of the Quran attributed to the Prophet's family. This is not something strange or unusual because there are many verses about which Al Kafi says that Angel Jibril, Gabriel, revealed in this form but they are now not included in the Quran. At this point we will only focus on the concept of Mahadas which means that the angels bring God's messages to him. Mahadas can hear the angels but cannot see them. Another tradition says, a Mahadas talks with the angels, hears their voice but cannot see them even in dream. Ash Shafi, Volume 1 p.204. Another tradition says, Ali said that there will be eleven Mahadas from me and my descendants. Ash Shafi, Volume 1 p.281. No practical difference between a Rasul and a Mohadas. You will notice that as far as the acquisition of knowledge directly from God through angels is concerned there is no difference between a Rasul and a Mahadas. Other traditions in Al-Kafi explain this point. For example, about the Prophet, the Quran says, So take what the Messenger assigns to you, and deny yourselves that which he withholds from you. 59 sevenths. But a tradition in Al-Kafi quotes Imam Jafar as saying, Accept whatever Ali says and keep yourself away from which Ali forbids. Ash Shafi, Volume 1 p. 255. This is because God has honored Ali the same way as he has honored the Prophet. This means that the fountain of knowledge of both was the same. After that it is added. Amir al mamenan Ali, often used to say, God has assigned me to allocate places in paradise and hell. I am Farooq e Akbar, discriminator the great. I am the cause of unity of all Muslims. I represent those verses which authenticate Imama. All the angels, souls and prophets recognized my wasaya, succession to the Prophet, as they did for Muhammad. I am elevated to the rank of Imama as Muhammad is elevated to the rank of prophethood, and this rank is given to us by God. Ash Shafi, Volume 1 p. 255. Another tradition said, an Imam is unique in his era. Nobody can match his qualities or his wisdom. There is no substitute for him and nobody is equal to him. He is bestowed with special honors and ranks from God. Ash Shafi, Volume 1 p. 231. About the Imam, it is written that he is from the descendants of the Prophet. From the children of Sayyidah Tahira Masoma. Fatima the Prophet's daughter. Ibad. P. 233. Prophets and Imams are appointed by God. They are given wisdom and knowledge from God which is not given to anybody else. Ibad. P. 224. This point is further clarified in another tradition. Imam Jafar Saqid said, Imam's knowledge is his access, which is extended up to heavens so that the process of revelation is not disconnected. Allah's instructions are conveyed only through an Imam. God does not accept deeds of the people unless they come through Imam. Imam is chosen and liked by God. He is pious and a favored person of God and the Prophet. He is a Hadi, guide, who knows the metaphysical secrets. God created Imams before the creation of human beings. Ibad. pp. 235-36. Do you notice that the only difference between Nabi and Mahadas is of wording? The concept is that God talks to men even after the end of prophethood. Opening parenthesis. I. E. Knowledge can be obtained directly from God. This belief continues to surface in different shapes and modes. It opened the closed door of prophethood. We will talk about the people who entered in through this door by various ways and means. At this moment, we will remunerate some more qualities of these Imams. 
Imam Jafar said, we are, the persons whose following is a duty, who must be obeyed. Dot. There is no alternative for the people but to accept our divine knowledge, it is not acceptable to be ignorant about us. The person who recognized us is a momen and who rejected us is a kafir. Infidel. Whoever neither recognized nor rejected us is a disillusioned person unless he returns to our obedience as ordained by God. Imam Barka said, our love is faith and our rejection is, kufa. Ash Shafi, Volume 1, p. 215-16. According to another tradition about Amir al mamenan Ali, Imam Muhammad Barka said, after the Prophet, obedience of Ali is a must just like that of the Prophet, disobedience of his commands, however small, tantamounts to disbelief. The Prophet was the gate to God through which entry is obligatory. He was a path that whoever followed reached God. Amir al mamenan was just like that. After him, successive Imams enjoyed the same status. Ash Shafi, Volume 1, p. 227. For Muslims, the Quran was, and remains, the authority for deen. But Imam Muhammad Barka says, Nobody has the power to claim that he has complete knowledge of the external or literal. Zahir, and hidden or esoteric, baton, meaning of Quran, except the osiyas. Imams. Ash Shafi, Volume 1, p. 261. Here, the word baton, hidden, is used that we will explain later. About the knowledge of Imams, it is believed that their knowledge is greater than those of the Prophet I. E. Knowledge began with the Prophet but it reached its climax with the Imams. In Al-Kafi it is narrated. I heard Imam Jafar saying, knowledge would have ended if it had not been increased by us. I asked, is there any knowledge which you get but not the Prophet? He said, knowledge is first presented to the Prophet and then to Imams but it reaches its climax with us. Ash Shafi, Volume 1, p. 291. About revelation, the Quran says that this knowledge is not iktisabi, meaning that the Prophet does not get revelation whenever he wants but it comes according to the wisdom of God whenever and whatever he wants, tells the Prophet through revelation. But with respect to the Imams, Imam Jafar says that the Imam is given knowledge whenever he wants. Ash Shafi, Volume 1, p. 295. About the knowledge of Gaib. Unknown. The Quran says that only God knows about it but he gives through revelation this knowledge to the Prophets whenever he likes. However, an Imam's position about the knowledge of Gaib is. Imam Jafar Sadek said, if an Imam who does not know what hardships he will face or what will be his fate, then he is not capable of leading people. He cannot be a representative of God. Quote opening parenthesis. Ash Shafi, Volume 1, p. 295. The pivotal belief of Christians is that Isa. Christ sacrificed his life for the sins of the people. It means that his blood became the atonement of the sinner's sin. One tradition of Al-Kafi says, Imam Musa Kazim said, because of abandoning Takia, God was displeased with us Shias and gave me an opportunity to choose between him and my life. So I gave my life and saved them. Ash Shafi, Volume 1, p. 297. Another tradition says, Imam Jafar said, God does not shy away from punishing those who bow before a cruel king and love a cruel imam though these people may be very pious. However, God shies away from punishing those whose deeds are not good but they bow before the God-appointed imam. Ash Shafi, Volume 1, p. 462. So, this becomes the basis of salvation, piousness and standard of belief and disbelief. Abu Hamza says that he heard Imam Muhammad Barka saying, Ali is a gate that was opened by God. 
whoever enters the door is momen and whoever remains outside, is unbeliever and for those who are in the middle. Neither inside nor outside his door. God says that they remain on at his mercy. I. E. He will pardon or punish to whom he would like. Dot. These imams were not only recognized by the Ummah followers of Muhammad but they were also recognized by the previous prophets. Hence there is a tradition. Imam Raza said that all divine books mention the Wilayat of Ali. God did not send any Rasul who was not aware of the prophethood of Muhammad and the Wasaya. Succession to Muhammad. Of Ali. Ash Shafi, Volume. 1, p. 540. The Status of Ali. Since we are talking about the status of Ali, it will be appropriate to present a few examples of Shia beliefs in this respect. Shias publish a monthly magazine from Lahore, Marful Islam, which prints a special issue annually in September or October on Ali and Fatima. In the September October 1972 issue of this magazine, Alama Majlasi has quoted Ali as saying, I am the embodiment of the blessed names, of the highest examples and the biggest signs, of God. I am the guardian of heaven and hell. I will allow the deserving people entry into paradise and send the people to hell who deserve hellfire. I am responsible for punishing those who deserve hell. All living creatures return to me. I am the center. After death all creatures return to me. I am responsible for the accountability of all. God consulted me at the time of formation of creatures. I will be their witness on the day of judgment. I have the knowledge of the life and death of all creatures. All verses, miracles and the books of prophets are entrusted to me. I am the guardian. I am the one with the staff and the sign. Moses. I am the one for whom clouds, thunder, lightning, darkness, lights, air, mountain, skies, stars, the sun and the moon have been conquered. I know the secrets of nature which God had given to Muhammad and that were passed on to me by Muhammad. Allah has bestowed me with his name, his kalima, his wisdom and intelligence. O oh people, recognize me before you lose me. God, I bear witness to you and seek help from you. pp. 60-61. It is written in the Sept. 1971 issue of this magazine. Muhammad would not have born if Maula. Master. Ali was not born. And the earth and the sky would not have been created if Muhammad was not born. Hence, there would have been nothing if Ali was not born. P. 8. Another quote from the November 1967 issue of this magazine. When he, Ali, appeared in the Torah of Moses, he became the tongue and speech of God. When he appeared in Zabor, Psalms, he became the embodiment of Dawood, David. Later, he appeared in the style of Solomon's, Solomon, prayers. When he appeared in the Bible of Christ, he became the helper and the innocent child. When he appeared in the Gospel of Johanna, John, he roared and recited verses in praise of God while mounted on a white horse. When he appeared in the Quran, he was referred to at various places as honorable, brave and marvelous. Sometimes he was the hand of God and sometimes the truthful tongue of the prophets. p. 91. It is written in the continuation of this statement. Move forward. When this unique first Imam appeared in the Zend Avesta of Zartusht, Zoroaster, he became the flame of fire. In Jainmat, Jainism, he appeared as Shanti and Ahina. In Vedas as Om. In Shastas as Paramatma. In Gayans as Mahabali. In Gita as Naran. In Ramayan as Mahatama. And he was seen by gods as Singh, Shur, Asad, Lion. This lion and Singh is being worshipped for centuries in temples. When Krishenji used to see 14 innocents in the shape of 14 attributes, one of the attributes was that of Singh I. E. Lion. Ali is also called by Shia's Shur E. Kudar I. E. The Lion of God. pp. 
91-92. These are some of the examples of the Shia belief about Ali's illustrious position. You may be aware of their Kalmia declaration of faith. There is no God but one God, Muhammad is his prophet and Ali is his wali, the Sejarant. Marifi Islam, November 1967, p.141, Tolui Islam Trust 25b, Gulberg 2, Lahore, Pakistan, Tolui Islam at gmail.com.